Hello everybody, this is Aaron coming to you from Houston, Texas on October 15, 2019. Today is going to be a little bit of chit chat, a little bit of story time uh, about some of my poker memories, some of the things that I like to do in poker while playing poker, do outside of poker, and everything around that. So when I first started playing, I began driving to Louisiana Lake Charles, which is about a two and a half hour drive. And uh, it was a great experience. I mean, playing casino games versus these live games in Houston are completely different. You get a bunch of different players and game selection is a huge part of this game. You get a lot of people that are curious about the game. Maybe they've played it with their relatives at a family event or anything like that with their grandfather, their significant other, or some of the friends around them. So they don't necessarily know the games. When you're making about two, three, four hundred bucks in a two hour session, three hour session, and your normal job is paying you about a hundred dollars after taxes per day, um, you start thinking about things a little bit differently. You start seeing money a little bit differently and, um, Poker becomes a little bit more lucrative than it has been before. Um, for other people that are playing poker for the fun of it and losing money, I don't exactly know why they keep playing it other than maybe the highs and the lows that they experience, the the rushes of what could have been and what should have been, and um, maybe not the best reasons. Poker is a wonderful game. I couldn't see myself playing this game if I wasn't a winning player. but. There's a lot of people out there that maybe think that they're winning players and they're not. So that being said, are you a winning player? Are you making money playing poker? And if you are, drop a comment below and let me know what you're winning. What's your hourly? What, how much have you won this year so far? How much is your 2019 poker career made you so far, whether you're paying full-time, part-time, recreationally, just for fun, just at home games, tournaments, whatever it is, comment it below. I want to know. So one of my favorite memories of playing poker, it's one of my very early memories of going to the casino. I ended up having quads. How I had quads is why this story is so memorable and important to my poker career and how I play as a person kind of put a little personality on how I play the cards. It's not just necessarily how you play them and what you're going to do and how you bet them. It's kind of the vibe that you take into each hand. So I'm on tilt. Everyone at the table knows it. I ended up getting pocket fives, flop the set, turn quads. When I turn quads, I jam super suspiciously. And after I get a first call, I stand up out of my chair. I put my jacket on as is to tell the entire table, all right, well, I guess I just wasted all that money since you're not gonna fold. End up getting four callers for my quads, getting the absolute maximum, which is very hard to do being that the board should be pretty locked up. The only things that should be calling me are very premium hands that either flop the set, a two pair. Of course, there's not any five holdings. So I got max value. After I got max value, I proceeded to ask for a rack because this was a huge pot. I haven't scooped a pot that big. It was about $900. And um, every player at the table was in disgust that they weren't getting their money back. They had no opportunity to get any of their money back. It was what the poker players call a hit and run. So as I'm getting up, I have my fiance behind me who just witnessed everything. She's happy, she's smiling, she knows I am freaking out inside. And as I'm walking away, a player to my right says, yeah, you probably don't wanna sit at this table any longer. You'll end up losing all that money. As to what I tell him is as the following, dude, it was a king, queen, five flop, and you called all the way down with pocket jacks. I'm not worried about my money. You should be worried about yours. Mic drop. I walk out to the casino with his money. We end up going somewhere super nice to eat. And that was a wonderful memory. Things like this, uh, it's never cool to just take somebody's money. But in the game of poker, it is totally allowed. It is what happens at every hand. And um, when somebody ends up pushing back to me, I... I tend to give a little bit of attitude. I mean, I believe that you give what 
you receive and I received bad energy from him. So I just uh, multiplied his energy by like five and totally made him feel kind of stupid. Pocket jacks and he could not find a fold button. I had a wonderful night after that. We ended up going to uh, the Golden Nugget, which we ate saltgrass, we had steaks, we lived it like we were rich and we walked around enjoying ourselves. At the time, it was a great win, 900 bucks, Brought 300, shouldn't have brought 300 in the first place. So it was a wonderful memory. Second memory that we're gonna talk about is one of the first times that I played a 5-5 game. The 5-5 game that I was playing at the time was a $1,000 minimum buy-in. And it was at a poker room here in Houston called by the name of Grinders. And it is 10 minutes from my house. Uh, and uh, at the time I was running pretty good, making some money, building up a bankroll. And uh, I was very curious about these bigger games. Not only that, but uh, the place grinders that I go to, there's a bunch of regulars. So most people that were playing the games that I was already playing, which were the one, two, no limit, hold them, were playing the five, five, no limit, hold them. So it wasn't like I was stepping into a field of different players. It was just that I was stepping up in stakes. So we ended up picking up a couple hands, um, bring our stack about to $1,100 before we get the amazing news from the dealer, which is pocket aces. We look down at pocket aces in a big, huge 5-5 five, five game. First time this has ever happened to us. How are we gonna play it? I don't know, we're under the gun. We limp, we limp. So we throw in $5, hoping that somebody's gonna raise so we can pop them. So it goes $5, fold, fold, fold. Middle position player raises 15. The big blind decides to raise it. He goes $75. Action is on me. I decide to raise it up to $250. Middle position player folds. Big blind decides to throw in a bet of $1,000. I have $1,100 left. I go all in. He snap calls. What does he show? King seven. <laughs> He's a very nice player. We've played a lot together. I don't exactly know what he was doing. Um, I ended up feeling really bad afterwards because I was shocked. It was such a huge amount of money at the time that I think I just kept talking about it after it happened. Anyway, uh, we decide to go flop twice, twice. Um, so we do a flop, two, two turns, two rivers, and uh, we're good. He almost sucks out, of, sucks out on us on, this, on the second one because the flop came a king. Turn was a seven, but the board paired on the river for the second board. So we end up scooping a pot. This is the thing. When playing bigger stakes, sometimes money is tossed around and uh, bluffing becomes a huge regular. When you have that much money and you have a player that has a good hand but isn't willing to commit his stack, you can really take advantage of that. So I think that's what was happening during this hand. I don't exactly know why. Everyone in the room knows me as a pretty decent player. I, I really don't know why he got out of line like that. Maybe he thought I had a pair of jacks or ace king and I was just gonna let it go. Um, but we ended up getting the max with pocket aces for the first time, getting pocket aces in a 5-5 five, five game. Super great memory. Um, we ended up leaving that game with $3,500 and um, it was a great cash. One of my favorite poker memories is a trip that I took to Florida. It was a work trip. I had to drive to Orlando. And uh, in the meantime, I stopped in Lake Charles, New Orleans, Biloxi, Jacksonville, Florida. And I ended up going to the Hard Rock in Tampa, Florida. So along this trip, I had one of the best runs that I've ever had. And uh, it was just win, 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 win. Win, 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 win. Win. And it felt amazing. I really started to feel the freedom of poker, uh, the, you know, build your own hours, work when you want to work. I was making money um, with my current job, so I had a per diem that was paying for my food. Um, but honestly, I didn't leave with that much money. I didn't, I, the plan was not to go vacation and have a blast or anything like that. The plan was to go do my job and in the meantime, just kind of eat and sleep so that wasn't the case i stopped in lake charles i ended up making 600 bucks which led me to going to new orleans with some sort of a bankroll um i ended up playing at haras made another 500 bucks um uh, between three to four nights and um, ended up leaving new orleans with a profit of about 1200 dollars. so i really 
started looking at myself a little bit differently and I started thinking about, hey, maybe I could do this for a living because this is amazing. I mean, I think anybody would. It wasn't necessarily luck. I was put in situations in every single game where I had to make hard decisions. This trip was super impactful for why I do what I do now and what I want to do in my future. Um, I had ultimate freedom. I was making money on the go. All I had to have was a casino or a poker room in my reach. And there we go. We could make I can make food, um, just like anybody stranded in the forest that knows how to start a fire. I mean, you feel resourceful. There's just something about it that is just amazing. Um, but ended up making it to Tampa. We played at the Hard Rock, um, played super good. I saw how big these rooms were in Florida. It was insane. There was tournaments, there was high hands, there was jackpots, and there was just money flying everywhere. Not to mention that there was like six to seven tables running. Uh, it was an amazing feeling, not only to just be in Florida, but to see a casino with a poker room so uh, booming. That being said, I ended up making a, a ton of extra money. So we ended up booking a trip to Disney World that we had talked about for years in our relationship. We'd sit on the laptop at night, kind of pull up the prices on what we wanted to do and just kind of end up being like, oh, well, maybe one day we'll be rich and we can end up going to Disney. So we ended up going to Disney. It was amazing. We ended up having some amazing food. Everywhere that we went, whether it was playing or whether it was just walking to a gas station, we were super friendly with people because we had great energy. I think that is contagious to winning in general is having a good perspective on life. Having good energy in general is gonna bring you things that you like. Uh, I do believe in the law of attraction. So whatever you um, are portraying, what, whatever kind of energy that you're giving, I feel like that is gonna be the energy that is received into your life. But I'm not gonna get too deep into that. I'm sure some people already know what I'm talking about and high vibe to those people. Whoosh, law of attraction, yay, secret. Uh, anyway, Back to the trip, it was amazing. We ended up eating at a ton of wonderful restaurants. So it was a great feeling to finally uh, get a little bit of the luxuries in life and um, to splurge a little bit. Um, it's always nice to do things that you might not have been able to afford or maybe something that you'd never expected to do in general. It was a great feeling to kind of step out of what the norm was. And um, I think that's what poker is for me. I think poker for me is stepping into another world. Money, 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 money. Again, if you have any feedback, just message me personally, message me on Instagram, and we'll just keep each other updated. Just, just let me, let me know what you guys want. You know, <laughs> don't be scared. Just tell me. I hope you're looking forward to the next one. Other than that, to all the people that support me in general that don't exactly play poker, thank you for watching this video. I hope you liked it. If you guys have any ideas on what videos I should make next, comment below, thumbs up the video, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to be seeing you guys soon.